If you've ever worried that you won't be able to connect with your ancestors, I want you to know that you're not alone. It's literally one of the top questions I'm always asked. And this video is for you. Hey, hey, I'm Ash Johns. I'm an ancestral healer and a certified psycho-spiritual life coach. And I work with women like you who are out to heal every generational pattern and every ancestral wound that is keeping you out of your radiance, out of your freedom, out of love, out of abundance and belonging. If you're already enjoying my vibe and curious about what I have to share with you, I definitely want you to subscribe to my channel, hit the notifications bell, and also just share it with other people if you find this video to be empowering and inspiring. So I get this all the time. People are interested in ancestral healing work and they're interested in doing whole lineage healing work with me. And then the first thing that they tell me is that they're afraid that they're gonna step into this world of ancestors and then they're gonna hear crickets. <laughs> or they will feel nothing, or that their ancestors won't show up, or that they will see absolutely nothing and they feel like they've wasted their time and they're really weird and uncomfortable. The truth is that it's not an uncommon concern. The truth is also that it's never ever happened and I've worked with hundreds, really thousands of people at this point. So while this is not an uncommon concern, it can grow into a huge source of frustration, which actually blocks you from making the connection and the relationship with your ancestors that you desire on your healing journey. So that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. Over the years of doing spiritual healing and coaching work with thousands of clients, I've noticed a few things about the doubts and the truths that prevent them from doing this work directly with their ancestors. In today's video, I'm going to share the main reasons why you can't communicate with your ancestral spirits and what you can do about it. So one of the main reasons why you cannot connect with your ancestor spirits is because quite simply, you think that you can't. I know, put in the eye roll here, people, but the mind is a very powerful thing and science has already proven that. We all know that through the coaching industry and amazing therapy work. If you believe something, if you think something, then that becomes your reality. So the very idea that you believe you won't be able to connect with your ancestor spirits, or that you believe your ancestral healing journey will be hard, or that you believe it's gonna be traumatic and full of grief, then baby, that is exactly what you're gonna get, all right? So the mind is a powerful thing, and whatever you're afraid of, it's gonna keep showing up in your ancestral journey. I'm not advocating for plant medicine or the drug use of any kind. However, if we look into that industry or that world, if you go into a plant medicine journey with your worst fears, or if you go into a surgery with your worst fears, it does energetically do something to your body and your experience in surgery or in your trip or journey with the plant medicine. Same thing with ancestral healing and working with your ancestors directly. You always want to open your heart and stay focused on your purest intention, the truth of what you desire and the possibilities that connecting with your ancestors is actually your birthright. Every single one of us have the ability to do this work, even though we will do it in our own unique ways, which is why you want to explore whole lineage healing with me. <laughs> so you want to adopt a childlike expression or experience of curiosity when you're interested in connecting and communicating with your ancestor spirits. If you have a blockage of fear or that you cannot do it, that will literally be the barrier that is stopping connection from happening. So before you get into this ancestral healing work, you need to acknowledge, accept, and believe that you would not be here. You would not be interested in ancestral healing unless it's capable and possible for you, who you are, to do it. All right, point blank, period, truth. The other thing is that there are three things that you absolutely will need in order to trust yourself and believe that you can do this work so you can connect with your ancestor spirits. Number one is to have your courage. Number two is have compassion. And number three is to have childlike curiosity, all right? Another thing that I've noticed over the years from clients that stops them from being able to connect and communicate with their ancestor spirits is that you're moving way too fast. We come from this fast paced world. Everything is quick paced. Even this video is super short and designed for quick consumption. Not my preference, but the internet, this is how we work in this world, right? If it were me, this would be a long situation. We would sit down, we would teach, we do a meditate, we go through a whole process, we call in the ancestors, I let you feel it and experience it, and then we'd be able to talk about why you felt blocked in the journey. 
but you're probably listening to this on your way to work or moving around cleaning in the kitchen or just perusing in the evening on some YouTube videos before you fall asleep. So I'm doing this quickly for digestion. But when it's time to do the work, you have to slow down. Spirit is subtle. It is not overt. It is not harsh. It is not quick. It is not you know, matter-based experience. And so if you're moving so quickly and you're wanting a quick response, you're messing yourself up because you're moving so fast you can't even sense or see and notice that your ancestors are right there trying to communicate and connect with you. So you cannot push and effort spirituality. You call it in, you slow down, you feel it, you sense, and you start to work with the subtle energetics that become much stronger when you slow down. So the thing is though, as soon as you slow down and start connecting with your ancestors and spirit, the faster things speed up. So that's the little hack. Now, are you guilty of either of these two things that I've already talked about? Are you doubting your ability to do ancestral healing work and connect with your ancestors directly? For whatever reason, you're afraid of what people have told you, you think you don't have the skills, you're looking for someone to give you a step-by-step -step process, which could be me, right? But I need you to still believe that you can do it. So are you doubting yourself? number one or are you feeling like you're moving too fast you want to quickly be sitting with your people and doing the thing and having magical things happen in your life let me know in the comments i would love to see if you feel guilty of these ancestral connection blocking behaviors no judgment we've all done them i totally get it and i help you overcome these next up is one of the other reasons that will stop you from being able to connect and communicate with your ancestors is mm. applying too much pressure on yourself for answers. Mm. Mm. Applying too much pressure on yourself, applying too much pressure on your ancestors. This kind of goes with that fast paced thing. You're like getting in there being like, give me an answer, give me the medicine, give me the story, tell me what happened, do this for me, give me a money, send me a man, like let's go. And the ancestors are like, yo, you haven't even got to know us. Do you wanna know our songs? Do you wanna know our dance? Do you wanna feel our energy? Tell us who you are, ask us about who we are. Like, it takes time to develop a relationship with your ancestors that benefits your lived life. Just like we don't go to the gym and immediately get skinny. At least I haven't, okay? So it takes time to go in the gym and like get to know the different exercises and work with someone. Like same thing with ancestors. You can't go and put the pressure on your body to lose weight within a week's time. We don't put pressure on the ancestors or yourself to have a relationship to be communicating overnight, right? If you have that as a gift, awesome. But most people, it takes time to cultivate their spiritual gifts, cultivate a relationship with their ancestors, and then it starts to, like the actual practice is what cultivates the relationship. Let me say it that way. Taking the time to sit down and practice ancestral connection, practice slowing down is what will alleviate the pressure and make the connection happen, right? So a lot of our ancestors haven't been spoken to in centuries, in decades, right? No one's honored them, no one's had an interest. We all thought this was scary and too woo-woo, right? So take some time here. Allow there to be some ease in your process and you'll get a better result. You also haven't activated these spiritual gifts. You don't know if you're clairvoyant, clairsistient, clairguttural, clairorbital. You don't know what your gifts are and how your ancestors are gonna communicate with you. So one of the reasons why I love whole lineage healing is that by going through this journey and this framework and this, this skill set, this practice, if you will, it will start to activate your spiritual gifts and your ancestors communicate to you mm -hmm. through your spiritual gifts. So you need time to trust them, to sense them, to feel them in your body and also be awakened to them so you notice when they're turning on so that your ancestors can communicate with you. So again, you need compassion, you need consistency, whatever that means to you. It might not be every day. It might be once a month or once a week, who knows? And you need to lean into the living experience of trust. Because if you don't do those three, compassion, consistency, and trust, you will keep blocking your connection with your ancestral spirits. And then finally, one of the main ways, I mean for real, besides like doubting you can do it or believing that you can't, the other thing that stops people from communicating and connecting with their ancestral spirits is coming with this energy of a transaction. I'm only doing ancestral connection or healing for this. 
It's like only going to your grandma's house when she cooks on a Sunday. You only show up because you want that food. Like, is that really the relationship that you want with people, with your grandmother, with your ancestral spirits? I don't think so, right? So if you come with this energy of transaction or extraction or taking from them, instead of really repairing, connecting, and forging a relationship, cultivating a relationship together, you will prevent them from trusting you and wanting to show up to share their wisdom and their blessings in your lived life. So approaching this practice only for what you want to gain is a good way to block your ancestral connection. Showing up in this practice takes time. I can't like emphasize that enough. And they need to see that you're serious about it, that you're not going to just come into spirit realm, get what you need to make your life better and then discard them, right? Like we don't operate that way in the real world or in the spirit realm, ideally, right? So let go of the transaction of it and really go on the journey and know that the journey is going to benefit the quality of your life and your legacy and lineage to come. So there is healing in the whole process of even doing ancestral healing or whole lineage healing to connect and develop a relationship with your people alone is very healing and connective. Like to connect, you must connect. That's it. <laughs> so I want to know in the comments, which of these four things have you been doing? Are you applying pressure? Are you coming at this very transactionally? If you are doubting yourself, which one of these are you doing that you think is blocking your ability to connect with your ancestors? Again, safe space. I mean, yeah, we're on the internet, but I see this across the board. I see it with so many people. That's why I can speak to it. If any of these resonate with you, then you definitely want to download my free ebook, Lay of the Lands. It's going to walk you through eight ways that you can explore ancestral healing, including my whole lineage healing approach that helps you learn how to connect with your ancestors directly. So you don't have to worry about any of these obstacles because I'll show you and teach you. After you download the book, it's only 14 pages. Definitely hit me up on Instagram at Ash Inspires and let me know what you think about it and how I can help you learn how to do whole lineage healing. So this comes to the conclusion of today's video. If you don't know, we drop these every Wednesday, videos about ancestral healing, breaking generational patterns, and creating a life aligned with your desires and your destiny for freedom, love, and abundance. I'm Ash Johns. I'm wishing you so much wellness in your journey. May you walk your path with courage and compassion. I'll see you next week.